Are you part of New Zealand's current infodemic? Are you spreading false and misleading information online? If so, then you probably suffer from information disorder syndrome. But how can you know for sure? Should you just take the government and mainstream media's word for it? Or are they part of the problem as well? In this episode, we're going to take a closer look at what it all means, so you can come to your own conclusion. Hello, my name is Shannon, and welcome to another episode of Cutting the Line, where we take a more in-depth, uncensored look into New Zealand news and culture. If you enjoy this video, please like and subscribe. We really do appreciate your support. So in New Zealand at the moment, and across the world, um, we are suffering from what is called an infodemic. Kate Hanna is the project lead for the Disinformation Project at Te Punaha Matatini. Tēnā koe, thank you for being with us. What do you do? Oh, kia ora, Jack. Good morning. Um, so what we've been doing since the beginning of the pandemic is trying to understand um, how information has flowed through communities and to people who need to understand what's going on. And what uh, the World Health Organization have described we're experiencing as is an infodemic. So what we are experiencing is an overwhelming amount of information about the virus because it's new and therefore about the vaccine as well. And we started uh, back in February, March last year at the same time the pandemic was emerging as, as a key international crisis. We knew that... Um, there would always be a, a spread on social media and outside social media of um, misleading information about the virus. And we needed to understand how, what kind of impact that would have in Aotearoa. According to the World Health Organization, an infodemic is too much information, including false or misleading information, in digital and physical environments during a disease outbreak. It causes confusion and risk-taking behaviours that can harm health. It also leads to mistrust in health authorities and undermines the public health response. So here they are referring to content created and information distributed online, which supported conspiracy theories and alternative narratives surrounding the COVID-19 pandemic. In particular, ongoing claims first made at the start of the COVID pandemic, the COVID had a low fatality in comparison to flu, only affected the elderly, that there was a death overestimation due to people being recorded as dying with not from COVID, that the severity and fatality of the virus was overestimated, and that due to the number of asymptomatic cases, herd immunity was the best approach. Information shared online, which supported the denial of the virus, as well as questioning the origins of the virus, are also seen to have contributed to the current infodemic. There are two terms that you need to be aware of when looking into the infodemic. So the first one is information disorder. So that term refers to the content itself being presented in a disordered format, so false or misleading. And there are three main types of disordered information. Um, the other term is information disorder syndrome, which is basically a mental illness that an individual can have that affects their ability to interact with information correctly. Um, there are three different grades of information disorder syndrome as well. Um, we'll look into them a bit more in another video. But just so you're aware, um, one term focuses on the information itself, whereas the other term focuses on the individual. But they are both used when talking about the infodemic, because on one hand you have information itself that is false and misleading being created and, and spread by people, um, but then you actually have the classification of information disorder syndrome, which relates to the individual. So this video here describes what the three types of information disorder are. So those are misinformation, disinformation, and malinformation. This video is by Kate Hanna. Um, I've already used a couple of screenshots from this before, and at the start of the video you were introduced to Kate Hannes, who was from the Disinformation Project. Um, this video is called The Infodemic in Aotearoa, New Zealand, Global Issues, Situations, Solutions. Um, and she does a fairly good job at describing these uh, three types. So we'll just watch that now. So you can see here that misinformation is false, but it's been created without an intent to harm. Disinformation is also false, but it has a harmful intent. And malinformation is uh, true information about people, 
or places or things that has been used with um, ill intent. And these all have different, um, can be used and reused in different ways. So a piece of disinformation might be shared by somebody who has no ill intent in sharing it, but, but the result is still sharing of, of disinformation. So now that you have a better understanding of what information disorder is and what the infodemic is all about, now we come to the real issue, the problem facing New Zealand and the rest of the world. What is true information and what is false? At the moment in New Zealand, we are being told to trust the government and trust the mainstream media. Unfortunately, recently and in the past, we have been shown many times that you can't always trust the government and you can't always trust the media. To claim that the government and mainstream media are immune to information disorder, that they should be trusted 100%, is in itself misleading. When we have a look at Claire Wardle's work, who was the first person to coin the term malinformation in 2017, she goes on to describe how media and politics are vulnerable to information disorder. Claire Wardle works with First Draft, a global nonprofit that supports journalists, academics, and technologists working to address challenges relating to trust and truth in the digital age. In her article, The Age of Information Disorder, she describes seven subtypes of information disorder, which are satire or parody, false connection, misleading content, false context, imposter content, manipulated content, and fabricated content. Under false connection, she says, This is old-fashioned clickbait, the technique of making claims about content via sensational headline, only to find the headline is horribly disconnected from the actual article or piece of content. While it's easy for the news media to think about the problem of disinformation as being caused by bad actors, I argue that it's important to recognize that poor practices within journalism add to the challenges of information disorder. She then goes on to describe misleading content as... This is something that has always been a problem in journalism and politics, whether it's the selection of a partial segment from a quote, creating statistics that support a particular claim but don't take into account how the data set was created, or cropping a photo to frame an event in a particular way. These types of misleading practices are certainly not new. If you have a look at mainstream media in New Zealand at the moment, particularly the website stuff, it's not hard to find content which fits into these two subtypes. Just have a look at these articles, which focus on the conspiracy theorists standing for local government in New Zealand. Do these not fall into the category of false connection? The old-fashioned clickbait? The technique of making claims about content via a sensational headline? Are they not misleading? The selection of a partial segment from a quote to frame an event in a particular way? Stuff's Fire and Fury documentary in itself was misleading as it only showed the most extreme, controversial statements from the disinformation actors that they were discussing in order to portray them as more extreme and dangerous than they actually are. So if the media themselves are susceptible to information disorder, then who do we trust? I personally think that the best way to approach this is to follow Don Miguel Ruiz's Fifth Agreement, in which he says, Be skeptical, but learn to listen. Don't believe yourself or anybody else. Use the power of doubt to question everything you hear. Is it really the truth? Listen to the intent behind the words and you will understand the real message. This is why it's so important to maintain free speech in New Zealand, regardless of what you believe in. We should always have the ability to doubt what we hear. We should always be allowed to discuss controversial topics. We should always be allowed to do our own research and come to our own conclusions, whether that goes against the accepted narrative or not. Because without being able to look for ourselves, to think for ourselves, then we'll never be able to find out what is true and what is false. Thank you for watching this video. This is the first in a series which will be covering free speech and information disorder in New Zealand. If you want to stay up to date, please subscribe and hit the notification button as well. If you do have anything to say, please leave a comment. I always like having healthy discussions about the topics that I've looked into. And as always, have a great day and I'll see you next time. See ya.